Good afternoon, Year 9. So we're going to do some harder examples now using the index rules. Remember there's four index rules. So when you're multiplying things with the same base, keep your base and add your indices. When you're dividing things with the same base, you keep your base and subtract your indices. If you have an index inside and outside a bracket, you have to keep your base and multiply your indices. We're going to be using that a lot today. And then the fourth one, which we'll also be using today, is if you've got something with a zero index, it will equal one. Okay, so having a look here, this is just an easy one to start with. Everything in the bracket has to be raised to the power of the bracket. So we have A cubed, B cubed, and that's your answer. When they get harder like this one, you've got to be really careful. Your calculator will do the work with the number out the front. So we have 6 to the power of 4. Let your calculator do that work for you and you get 1,296. Write it down. Then you're using your index law for the inside and outside of bracket. So we're going to be multiplying our indices. When you've got D with no index, you could write a 1. We don't really need to. We're just going to write that as D to the power of 4. And this one here, we've got an index inside and outside of bracket. Multiply those and you'll get p to the power of 8. So down here, same thing. It's 4 to the power of 4. Use your calculator. It gives you 256. Write it down. Then we're going to use our index laws for our little numbers. Multiply your indices and you get b to the power of 8. Multiply your indices and you get c to the power of 12. Down here, if it's a straight out number question like this, just put it in your calculator and let it do all the work. Just remember that those brackets must be put in or you will often get a wrong sign. So just put exactly what you see there in your calculator. So it'll be open bracket, minus, bracket key, put the 3 and 4 in for the fraction, close bracket to the power of 3. If it looks like that on your display on your calculator, you'll get it right. Okay, over here for this one. So we're going to do everything to the power of 8. So everything in that bracket is going to the power of 8. So 2 to the power of 8, do it on your calculator and you'll get 256 at the top here. Multiply your indices inside and outside a bracket and you get n, oh, I've written the wrong number down, 5 times 8 is 40. And on the bottom, we just have p to the power of 8. So don't forget some of the things. Everything in the bracket has to go to the power of 8. All right, in f, this one's a straight out number question. So just use your calculator and let it do the work for you. This one, we're back to sum with letters, so you can't use a calculator for everything. This is 3 to the power of 2. Your calculator will tell you that's 9. This has to be to the power, so it's r squared. And down here we have an index inside and outside a bracket. Multiply those indices. T to the power of 4. Okay, now we're going to get to some harder ones here. These will be really badly done in exams when we get down here. So you've just got to take your time. So this first question, it is in a bracket with a cubed. So we're going to do what we were doing a minute ago. 2 cubed on your calculator will give you 8. Index inside and outside a bracket, multiply them, and you get x to the 30. Y, multiply the indices, y to the power of 45. And over here, just copy it down, and now we're going to do this multiplication. So 8 times 5 is 40. Now we have to use the rule where we're multiplying things with the same base, we add the indices. So x to the 30 times x squared, add the indices and you'll get x to the 32. y to the 45 times y cubed, add your indices and you get y to the power of 48. So just take your time, they will take a few steps with the harder ones. Alright, so up the top here, remember if you have a division, I've told you to write it as a fraction. So I want that written as a fraction first, in a big bracket, with a squared outside it like it already is. Inside the bracket, we're going to simplify. So use your fraction key for 18 over 3, and that gives you 6. Then I've started to cross out these things. I hope you can see it. So we've got Q to the 5 on the top, and we have just a Q on the bottom. 
I put a little one there. So cross out q to the power of one, take one of these q's off, and you'll have q to the four on the top of the fraction. With the r's, we've got r to the eight on the top and r squared on the bottom. We're going to cross out the r squared and take two of these off up here. So we've got an r six, r to the power of six written at the top. There's nothing on the bottom, so you don't have to write anything. Oh, close your bracket off and keep your square. So now we have to square everything. So 6 squared on your calculator is 36. Write it down. Index inside and outside a bracket. Multiply them. You get q to the 8. Index inside and outside a bracket. You get r to the 12. And that's the end of that question. Next one. So this one, we've got to work inside our brackets first. It's like any order of operations. You have to work it out in your bracket first. So we're going to do this multiplication in the bracket. That's the first thing. So 2 times 5 is 10. Make sure you're multiplying your numbers if it's that. Then we use our index rules here. We're multiplying, so we add our indices together. And you'll get x to the power of 12. We're multiplying. So we're going to add our indices together and you get y to the power of 18. Then we've got a big cubed outside it. We're now going to deal with that. 10 cubed on your calculator gives you 1,000. Index inside and outside a bracket. Multiply the 12 times 3 and you'll get x to the 36. With the y's, 18 times 3. Just check it on your calculator. That's 54, so we have y to the power of 54. Okay, the last of the harder ones here. So it's a division. We're writing it as a fraction. Copy it exactly as it says it. Then we're going to concentrate down the bottom here because we've got a bracket that's being squared. So we need to work all that out. So we have 3 squared. The calculator tells you that's 9. This is all coming down on the bottom here. This is Q squared. Write it down. And we have an index inside and outside a bracket. Multiply them and you get R to the 4. Now we're going to do the division, the fraction. So 18 over 9, put it in your fraction key on your calculator, and you'll get a 2. The Q's, we've got Q to the 5 on top and Q squared on the bottom. Cross out the Q squared and take two Q's off the top, and you'll get Q cubed on the top. And R's, we've got R to the 8 on the top and R to the 4 on the bottom. We're crossing out the R to the 4 and take 4 of these off and we're left with R4 on the top. Nothing on the bottom, that's your answer. Okay, these last examples are all to do with the power of 0. So anything raised to the power of 0 equals 1. It seems like it would be an easy thing but we often make mistakes on this and we shouldn't be, you've just got to concentrate on it. So you're looking for any base to the power of zero, that whole thing will equal one. So I'm going to put a box around what they're talking about. So here's your base of m and the power of zero. That whole thing equals one. It's got a negative in front here, so you have to keep that negative. So the answer is negative one. Down here it's very similar. The thousand is the base to the power of zero, all of that will equal one. Keep that minus sign in front. All right, this next one, this is where we start getting a bit confused. So the base here is the bracket, right? So the base is this whole bracket. You don't really need to look inside it. It's like the brackets are like a box. There's something in there. You can't see what's in there. It doesn't matter. Okay, so the box or the brackets is the base to the power of zero. So that whole thing equals 1. So that's your answer. So down here, let's do a few more practices. There's a 7 to the power of 0. That will equal 1. There's a 2 to the power of 0. That will equal 1. Bring the plus sign down, and answer is 2. Okay, so over here, again we've got one of these brackets. Don't look inside the bracket. It doesn't matter what's in there. So something, some bracket to the power of zero will equal one. Copy the plus six times 
and this bit equals 1. So we've got a to the power of 0, that all equals 1. Now you can throw all that in your calculator and get your answer of 7. Alright, so down here, 3 to the power of 0 equals 1, 5 to the power of 0 equals 1, copy the times in the middle, and your answer is 1. Down here, w to the power of 0 is going to be in the box, that equals 1. p to the power of 0 will also have a box around it. So we have 2 times, this is a 1, times 3 times, and that's a 1. Then throw it all in the calculator and you get a 6. Alright, the last one, just be careful with it. So this one up the top here, the q to the power of 0 equals 1. So we have 12 times 1. But on the bottom, it's one of those ones with the bracket. So that whole bracket is your base. All of that equals 1. Don't look inside the bracket. So we have 12 times 1 all over 1, and that all equals 12 when you work it out. So good luck with your homework. Make sure that you set them out the same way as I've been doing. I want to see the questions written down, the answer underneath, and of course any cancelling or whatever. I've used a lot of red pen. I think it's important you do too, and, and write fairly big so you can see your indices. Good luck with your homework.